Yo, what up, podcast peeps? Welcome to another edition of Daily Scone. Glad you're here. Uh, as always, the one thing I ask is do me a solid, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, however you're listening to this. That would help me a ton. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, is the power of the ask and really uh, parlaying that into the value of job shadowing. So I get, I think sometimes people are surprised at how willing I am to allow people to come shadow the show. And I have students do this all the time. As a matter of fact, we had two this week, and I got another request just today on Friday um, for the same thing. And the reason, and I am eager to allow anybody that wants to come watch a show to come see how it's done, because the only way, well, several reasons. First, it's the initiative. It's I think you reward people with initiative. If someone is going to take the time and be proactive and say, hey, shoot, f- find my email, find my Twitter, be aggressive, shoot me a message, say, hey, I'm a student, whatever, I- I'd always love to be in media, could I come shadow your show and ask you questions? Absolutely. I've said this before, two types of people in media. One, who thinks everybody's competition and will step on you to get wherever they want to go. And two are the people that realize we all had help to get where we are and are eagerly willing and always willing to pay that forward. I like to think that I'm number two. If anyone ever, I'm number two, not, not that number two, but I, but I, I always, if anyone has questions, I'm always willing to answer them. If anyone wants to come shadow a show, I'm eagerly ready to, to find a time to, to make that happen. And the reason I think shadowing is so important is when when I first started in this is my own personal experience and I think everybody maybe is different maybe some people learn best by being in a classroom uh, other people learn from watching videos or listening to podcasts I think we're all different in how we learn but for me I can tell you that my greatest experiences when I was first getting into radio and when I knew it's what I wanted to do and how I learned a ton was, but when I got my foot in the door at my first job in May of 2003, I was a part-time promotions intern. Now, I've, I've told this story before. I actually scroll back and go find the Buzzy the Bee episode to talk about like doing absolute crap jobs and, and just doing the crap work, the grunt work to get better opportunities. That's part of it. But when I was hired as a part-time promotions intern, I took it like just to get my foot in the door. What I would do is like I would have, you know, I would report to the promotions director. And I'd show up and say, all right, what do you need me to do? And so he'd give me a task and, or three tasks. I'd get them done because I was just eager to impress. So I would get that done. He's like, man, I don't really have anything else right now. So what I would do is in that, that radio station, we had, it was a cluster of six stations. I would go, and they had a news talk station, they had a soft rock station. Anyway, I would go to the the people that were on air, that were live on air shifts, and say, "Hey, do you mind if I just like sit and watch? Like, I won't. I, I mean, I won't bother you at all. I just want to watch you do what you're doing." And maybe not surprisingly, that I think those people on air were very eager to help that someone that a young person took interest and that they were able to sort of explain what they did. And there's two that are just like racing to the forefront of my mind right now. One is a guy named Don Grady. And Don's still on the radio in Baton Rouge. But Don was a news guy on 1300 AM WIBR, which was a news talk station at the time. And Don did morning and afternoon news and like news magazine type shows. Well, Don helped me tremendously learning how to write uh, broadcast newscasts for radio, uh, formatics, history. Don, Don was a radio lifer. He was in the Army. He was on you know, the Armed Forces Network, and he just continued in radio for years. Don was probably in his 60s at that time, um, and I gained an awful lot of knowledge just by watching Don. And then I got assigned to produce a newsreel-type format for him in the morning, he was extremely patient. Like Don took a like to me to a point where, like, I'd show up every morning and he'd have the sports page and a, a pack of pop tarts sitting right there on my chair at the producer chair when I walked in. But it's like that's a radio lifer who recognized, hey man, here's a kid trying to break in, not making any money, like who's working really hard. Let me show my appreciation and value. Anyway, like I owe Don way more than than like I could ever uh, explain. 
then the other was actually someone who I work with now, which is phenomenal. I love how like how this whole thing became cyclical. But it's Michelle Southern, who Michelle and I, oddly enough, went to the same elementary school like decades before. Uh, didn't know, we weren't in the same class, we were, but but knew of her, and she was the midday host on B one hundred and three. It was a soft rock station, and. I, I can't tell you how many times that summer I heard Faith Hill cry, but I would go sit in there, and Michelle is the one who taught me how to run a live board. She was doing a live air shift, and she showed me, all right, look, here's the button, here's the mic, here's this computer, here's the potted up, here's the volume, here's how you go live. It's like she taught me how to run a live board in, in B-103 at what was then Citadel Broadcasting in 2003, and then I'd because I showed such jitterous to people were like, Hey, well, we have this shift. If you want to voice track it. And like, that's how I got better opportunities. So like, if you're eager and you ask and you open your mouth and you ask for those opportunities, like they're, they're going to come. Like if you're, if you want to break in, if you're interested in media and, and, and you just wait for somebody to approach you or you just blindly email a resume like that's never going to be as impactful as saying, can I come shadow your show? And then you look somebody in the face, shake their hand and you show how eager you are to get and they can get a read on you. Like that's always going to be more impressive than just emailing a resume with a lot of extracurriculars that you did. It's just the power of the ask. There's another story I love. It doesn't have to do with radio per se, but, uh, Dan Borne, who is the voice of tiger stadium. And if you're familiar with LSU, You've heard, you, you've certainly heard Mr. Dan tell the story, but Mr. Dan has been like a, a, a family friend, his son, Jason, family friend for years, um, his wife, Lizette, they're awesome people, but I've heard Mr. Dan tell the story so many times, and he talks about the, the, the power of the ask. When the LSU public address announcer job became vacant, uh, he applied for it, he submitted a resume, they called him in for an interview, they gave him the job, when he asked how many people applied, they said, you were it. He was the only person that applied because so many people just assumed that the job would be granted to somebody or promoted or they wouldn't be in the running for whatever the case may be. I think so many times like we convince ourselves, oh, I can't do that or that'll never be me or he'll never respond to that email or, or she's not interested. Like It's the, the value of the ask. And I have never once ever turn down somebody who wanted to come shadow a show in studio if someone was i don't care how young or old you are or how young or old you think you are if you're aspiring to do broadcast to do media and you think there could be value in you coming to watch a show and to see how it all unfolds and to ask questions by all means come on so it be it with me or like someone else who you find interesting or you could see following their path, or you want to learn more. And I think this is true in any any field, not just in media. Like, if you want to be an attorney, like, email a, an attorney and say, hey, can I come shadow you for a day? You know, if you want to be a judge, same thing. If you want to be a doctor, like, I don't know that you can go into a doctor's clinic or into a, a surgery, but I'm sure there's programs where that might be possible. And if nothing else, they can direct point you in the right direction. If you want to be a CPA, like, go, ask these people if you can go watch them work for a day. And the worst thing they could ever do is tell you no. But I, for, as for me, if anyone ever asks, I'll always say yes. It's the power of the ask. Always remember that. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Daily Scone. Appreciate you all for tuning in. As always, do me a solid. Hit the subscribe button no matter what platform you're listening here. If it's iTunes, uh, Google Play, Music, a Podbean, Spreaker, Stitcher, YouTube, however you're, you're listening to this, Uh, I would appreciate it so much if you just hit the subscribe button. And if you think there's value here, pass it along, share it. That's how we get this thing. uh, Rate us on iTunes. That's how we get this thing growing. So until next time, this has been Daily Scone.